Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the perfumer items. And I say items because it's kind of split between bolts, talismans, and actual items, consumables. It's very interesting because only two of their things do damage. The perfumer bolts and the spark aromatic. Everything else is a buff. And they have a talisman dedicated to buffing the damage for the two things that actually do damage. I don't know why From Software decided to make this how it is. And to be honest, they kind of missed the mark in general with the perfumer aromatics. Don't get me wrong, blood boil aromatic and uplifting aromatic are excellent. The other ones that aren't spark aromatic are basically useless. And then Spark Aromatic exists to augment the damage of their perfume build. The problem with the aromatics is you are only limited to 10. And only 10 total. You can't have 10 of each, it's just 10 overall. This is very bad because if you want to use, say, Uplifting and Blood Boil Aromatic to buff your damage, Although, I don't know why you'd want to do that, since they only buff physical damage, but say you wanted to do that, and had like a dagger in the offhand or something, you would be down to 8 spark aromatics. And even on New Game, which is what I played through with, it doesn't do enough damage to kill the boss if you have 8 or 10 aromatics. If they made it 15 or 20 and maybe reduce the damage or made it so you can carry 10 of each the build would be a lot more viable but as it stands you can't even kill the draconic tree sentinel that is guarding lindell in base new game with 50 dexterity which is the most relevant soft cap for the aromatic you can't kill that in 10 uses of the spark aromatic even with the Flame Shrouding Crack Deer, the Fire Scorpion Charm, the Ritual Sword Talisman, and Perfumer's Talisman. And these are all 10 to 20% buffs. And you still need a crossbow with Perfumer Bolts, or a dagger, or a sword, or whatever else that does damage, to actually kill the Dracon Tree Sentinel. And that's not good. They are, I don't want to say underpowered, because Obviously, with 50 dexterity, you're doing 778 attack power with the Spark Aromatic. That's very good for basically not needing any investment outside of farming. The problem is, you can only carry 10, as I said. And so, even if you buffed the AR and gave it like 200 more AR, it still couldn't kill most bosses in those 10 uses. So you're stuck in this very weird scenario where, yes, you have a Talisman that specifically boosts this one aromatic. And yes, there are perfumer bolts, which I'm using with the polite crossbow to do damage once I run out of the spark aromatic. You have a talisman that is specifically designed to give a 20% boost to the spark aromatic. The spark aromatic only has 10 uses. In those 10 uses, despite being mid game with mid game stats, I can't kill a boss with a spark aromatic. So why should I equip the perfumer's talisman and farm the materials to actually use it? If you're using it to augment a dex build, you are giving up a talisman slot to boost your damage to have it do good damage. Or if you're using it on a non-dex build, you're losing a lot of AR as relative AR goes, which basically means it's useless. They could have made it better by just giving it more uses or making it so there are multiple different types of aromatics. Because I did test this on Renala as a summon and I did test this on Morgoth as well. Both of those have water in their second phases, which reduces the damage that fire does. Which means that assuming it's just water or just rain, you're losing 10% damage already just off the bat and there's nothing you can do to change that because it only does fire damage why would you even make this a thing and specifically have things to build towards it 
when it doesn't serve its function of killing a boss. There are a lot of things in Elden Ring that aren't fully fleshed out. This is one of them. You can make it do good damage. You can make it do good damage enough to one shot in PvP. That's great. But if I can't get through mid game bosses with mid game stats, why would I use it in the end game? Why would I specifically build towards it? It's just really disappointing that you have this mechanic and you have it kind of fleshed out enough to be somewhat viable if you really try to maximize your damage you can kind of make it work but not really and in a game where there's a dime a dozen overpowered weapons that can kill the bosses in 10 seconds why would you ever use this so now that that rant's over i just want to say that i'm probably going to be moving away from Elden Ring builds specifically pve builds since most of them have been done at this point of course, I'm still going to correct YouTube videos and all that. But with the Elden Ring DLC looking to be very far away, I'm going to move into making builds for other RPG games, such as Lords of the Fallen that's going to come out this October. There's really not much in terms of balance that Elden Ring offers that other games don't offer. And at this point, every build's been made. There's really no way to innovate in the build making scene aside from not spreading misinformation, which is apparently a hard thing to do. And I'm probably gonna go back to making video essays on different games as well. Of course, I did the Dark Souls one and the Warhammer one. That was back before I started doing the Elden Ring build videos. So for my build, we are level 61 because the Spark Aromatic does not particularly scale to end the game very well. It is mostly used for low level, which isn't actually that good because you can't get it consistently at low level, but I've already talked about that. We have 35 Vigor boosted to 40 with Gaujic's Great Rune. 40 Vigor is the Vigor soft cap. And then we have 45 Dexterity boosted to 50 with Gaujic's Great Rune. And that is the second soft cap for Dexterity. For weapons, we are using the Spark Aromatic and the Pulley Crossbow with Perfumer's Bolts. According to Fextra, Perfumer's Talisman does boost the Perfumer's Bolts. I did not test this, and either way it doesn't really matter, because it's in case if we run out of Spark Aromatics. It's not a main focus of this build. For armor, we have the Knight Set. You can buy this at the Round Table Hold, and it will give you 51 Poise. It is the easiest 51 poise set to acquire, and you can acquire it as soon as you talk to Melina. For talismans, we have the Perfumer's Talisman, the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Ritual Shield Talisman, and the Fire Scorpion Charm. The Perfumer's Talisman, of course, boosts the damage of the Spark Aromatic, and may or may not boost the damage of their Perfumer's Bolts. The Ritual Sword Talisman and Ritual Shield Talisman boost our offense and defense at max HP. And then we have the Fire Scorpion Charm to boost our fire damage because that is what the Spark Aromatic does. It does pure fire damage. Then for the Grey Rune, as I've said, we have the Gaudric Straight Rune boosting our stats. At low level, this is the best Grey Rune. For the Crystal Tier, we have Opline Hard Tier and Flame Shrouding Crack Tier to boost our fire damage and our damage negation. This build, despite being low level, is very tanky and it dishes out good damage. 